One thing about games that really intrigues me from time to time is the exploration of theme, especially regarding national holidays. You have games talking about Christmas and Halloween, even Easter every so often, but one that really gets ignored, other than maybe a movie game here and there, is Independence Day. You can see why. It's not exactly a game-like holiday, and it's only in America. And uh, I'm sorry to say we don't have an Independence Day game today either, but it's definitely one that brings about some interesting ideas of intense patriotism. Liberty or Death, developed and published by Koei Corporation in 1993 for MS-DOS PCs, as well as the NEC, PC-98, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. And by Jove, I do say that this is the single most American box cover I've ever seen. George Washington, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, the original 13 Colony Seals, a skewed version of the Francis Hopkinson American flag, ah, oh, it's glorious! All it needs is a few more extra patriotic symbols of undying freedom, and man, you've got yourself the most independent example of gaming box art excellence known to the Republic for which it stands indivisible with liberty and justice for all! Too bad the back of the box is boring, with only a few bland-looking screenshots and predictable marketing blurbs scattered around. On the other hand, inside the box, well, just feast your eyes on this baby. A respectably sized poster of that wildly patriotic box art, sure to instill unreasonable feelings of lopsided nationalism wherever it's displayed. You also get the game on a freedom-loving 5 quarter inch floppy disk, a 72-page manual covering crap loads of gameplay information and revolutionary historical factoids, and a reference card that tells you how to lose, which is always useful if you're playing the Brits. Liberty or Death begins with a liberated intro featuring a dead guy, a rather famous dead guy, Patrick Henry, and his famous Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech, from which the game gleans titular inspiration. And man, that's some upbeat music for such a sobering speech. Ah, who says war is hell? It's obviously much more of a carnival, filled with laughter and cotton candy. Once you're done taking in the delightfully dithered EGA graphics, it's time for some menus. Start a new game and choose who you want to play against, and immediately you're picking sides. Americans defend, British attack, but either way you're going to be picking a commander-in-chief from a selection of three on each side. They all have unique stats divided into leadership, tactics, discipline, and reputation, and in theory each of them are capable of leading your chosen faction to victory. But of course there are some difficulty and game details to choose from that make this even more customizable, so pick some stuff and prepare to liberate the dookie out of everything. You begin on July 1st, 1775, and in classic American fashion, the first order of business is setting a budget that you will inevitably screw up in the name of making things better for the people. Each season of the game, you'll get more cash from those that are still alive, but obviously you want to stretch your funding as much as possible in the meantime, because war, war never changes. The American Revolutionary War, in this case, lasted until 1783, and liberty or death places you smack dab in the middle of managing the bloodshed. It plays similarly to various turn-based strategy and war games of the time period, especially those from Koei's historical simulation series of which this is a part of, alongside Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Nobunaga's Ambition, and Genghis Khan. The idea is that you focus on managing districts, units, and your economy most of the time, and every so often a skirmish will break out and you'll move over to battle mode to do that. Winning these battles is key to succeeding, and managing your districts and cash flow are key to creating successful armies, so it's a self-feeding loop of thinking multiple steps ahead with every move. The number of options is downright overwhelming at first, even if you're familiar with war games in general. <laughs> or War Games in Lieutenant. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bad joke. Moving on. Yeah, anyway, it's got a bunch of junk to do, and it's not always apparent what does what, uh, even when constantly referring to the manual. This is one of those games where losing a lot in the beginning is probably the most useful thing you can do. Sorry, 18th century Americans. Learning how to play this game made your deaths a worthy sacrifice. So once you figure it out, is it any good? 
it's not exactly what I'd call truly satisfying to play, but it's definitely got its strong points. One of those is that as a thinly veiled learning tool, liberty or death is outstanding. In my eyes, the best way to learn is when you don't realize you're learning. Tons of so-called edutainment games fail at this, and then you have something like liberty or death that pulls it off effortlessly. Playing the American side and then the British side really shows how massively the deck was stacked against the 13 colonies and how terrifying it must have been to be an American revolutionary back then. And then the sheer economic and militaristic power of the British is a blessing as much as it is a curse to play with, because you feel a sense of complacency playing as them. It's like you're so big you can't fall, but then you realize it's not that simple due to the tactics and loyalty and planning required to amass an effective British invasion force. And dealing with other international interests complicates things as well, with the French, Dutch, and Spanish all making demands and taking sides. That's not even including all the spying, bribing, and propaganda you have to utilize in order to gain support and draft enough soldiers to wage war with. The battles themselves are a tad simple though, with most of the work being in the preparation. Each map is divided into a grid, with each square representing a specific type of terrain. There are varying unit types that do varying unit things, like stabbing dudes with bayonets and building makeshift bridges, but mostly battles just consist of clicking around to move your dudes on top of other dudes and then watching the numbers dwindle. I was most disappointed with this aspect of the game, but again, it's effective in portraying the idea of how this particular war was fought. Just be sure to keep your commander-in-chief safe, because if he's captured, then you automatically lose and have to either restart or watch the computer play the game better than you. Yeah, it's bad enough that you lost, but then to have the computer show you how it's done, yeah, that's downright un-American. And that is Liberty or Death, a game about the USA that lets you destroy the USA before it becomes the USA. Pretty awesome, actually, at least in regards to the idea and the amount of stuff it lets you do. But much like with Mary, Queen of Scots, the execution is a little off. It doesn't quite make the cut for my personal list of must-play war games, but it's definitely worth grabbing and playing if you're into massive amounts of focused historical context in your games, especially the Revolutionary War, because that's all this is. Much like America itself, I like this, and I'm glad it's there, though I don't always love it, but I accept it for what it is. And if you enjoyed this video and would perhaps like to see some more classic DOS games and other stuff, well, you're on the right channel. LGR is all about that and more because I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I just like making videos. And if you like this style, then why not click some of these or subscribe to be notified whenever they happen in the future, which is Mondays and Fridays. And you can always follow and interact with me on Twitter and Facebook for other stuff throughout the week, as well as support the show on Patreon to see videos early and more. And as always, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>